Uh, just a few uh, comments on Egypt. Uh, when we were here during the uh, spring meetings, uh, all the writings uh, showed that there was a sense of panic around Egypt, uh, being one of the biggest uh, wheat importers, particularly from uh, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, and we had to underscore that it's a shock, but not a panic. Uh, and this comes on the back of uh, preemptive measures that the government took several years earlier. Uh, for example, investing in silos for wheat storage. That was not the case before 2014. Now we have it across uh, different parts of the country, played an extremely important role in storing wheat. Uh, it wasn't in anticipation of the war, but that was, uh, uh, became regular practice. The second was increasing agricultural land uh, for wheat production. So actually half of what uh, we consume is locally produced. Uh, creating incentives for farmers uh, trying to uh, increase the yield. So again, some of the policies that uh, Joe mentioned uh, as well. Uh, reform is a continuous process for any country. Uh, in our case, uh, trying to uh, look at uh, uh, the storage capacity, improve uh, the yield, uh, and widen the uh, agricultural uh, land for wheat production was extremely fundamental. When the shock happened, uh, nonetheless, there had to be uh, social safety nets for those mostly uh, uh, affected by uh, the food increase because wheat was one, but then you also had fuel, you had food, so the, 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 the inflation impact was quite, uh, was quite sizable. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is where targeted policy comes in. And let me say that uh, uh, because we've already had uh, programs and projects with the bank, such as uh, you know, ones related to social solidarity, making sure that the social safety nets are uh, uh, you know, well targeted, uh, digitized, that also helped tremendously uh, in making uh, these, uh, um, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the social safety net expansion uh, much easier. That happened in COVID, and it also happened uh, during uh, uh, the uh, or the fallout of uh, of the crisis. Uh, the other uh, important aspect, and let me just uh, uh, mention adaptation and resilience uh, in light of Egypt being the president of COP coming up uh, next month in Sharm el Sheikh. And uh, two key messages uh, for us at COP, uh, adaptation and resilience are extremely important, and the war has shown this, uh, that we do need to increase uh, the investments in uh, agricultural projects and try and see, uh, you know, a crop resilient uh, uh, production. Uh, something else uh, is from pledges to implementation. Here comes the point on financing. Uh, and it's very important also uh, that uh, public money, whether it's from the MDBs uh, or uh, uh, other sources uh, needs to try and leverage private sector investment in agriculture and water. And we're trying to provide examples of that because, uh, you know, uh, MDBs put together would only uh, be able to uh, fulfill 4% of total climate financing needs globally. And so to leverage on the private sector, there needs to be uh, also a focus uh, on uh, innovative financing instruments. And that is another uh, important message that we're bringing to COP as well.